Hi, I'm Stephen Rooks, and I did my pattern recognition final project on methods of image classification in MATLAB. Uh, image classification is used in a number of applications. Uh, facial recognition, pedestrian detection, and remote sensing are all examples. Um, image classification can be either unsupervised or supervised. Um, unsupervised is a method where the uh, classes are determined by the algorithm uh, from the training images and the and a supervised image classification is an approach where the class is already known and the algorithm just sorts them into the predetermined uh, classes. Uh, this project will explore three different methods of supervised image classification. Um, the multi-class support vector machine using bag of features, the support vector machine using convolutional network neural network features, and then a CNN by itself as the uh, classifi classifier. The Caltech 101 image data set is used was used for this project. Um, 31 images total were used for each category. Um, it was limited to this because the, that's the smallest set size of all the different categories that are available in the Caltech 101 image data set. Um, so about half were used for training and the other half were used for testing. Um, to evaluate the effect of increase, increasing dimensionality um, the number of categories was increased from 2 to 20. Um, since the training size is the same regardless of how many categories were used, we should see some decrease in performance as the number of categories is increased. Uh, and then also to randomize the specific categories or image categories that were used for each experiment, uh, 200 Monte Carlos were run. Um, for each category size, and the uh, the specific categories were randomized for each run. The first method is the uh, support vector machine using bag of features. Um, the bag of features is a is adapted from the bag of words method that's used in language processing. Um, so what it does is it extracts all surf features. Uh, from all training images and all image categories. Um, this is can be tens or hundreds of thousands of, of features depending on um, depending on the, the data. Um, and this this is kind of equivalent to the words that would be extracted for language processing. So if you had multiple uh, text inputs this would be the all words that are present in all uh, text inputs. Uh, next, uh, k-means clustering is used to re reduce the the surf features into k features of most importance. Uh, these form what is called the or referred to as the visual vocabulary. And then each image is is represented as the frequency that each word in the visual vocabulary is in the image. Um, so however often each word shows up in the image, that's that's what is used as the feature vector. And then those that feature vector is, is fed into the uh, support vector machine. The uh, multi-class support vector machine is a discriminant model that separates classes via hyperplane boundaries. And the boundaries are constructed by maximizing the distance between the nearest samples belonging to each class. Um, so the feature vectors from all training images are what are used to form those hyperplane boundaries. And once the boundaries exist, we've got a trained classifier, and we can we can we can feed it test images to to determine which class the test image belongs to. In MATLAB, we can use the bag of features function to to generate the 
the feature vector. Um, this requires the statistics and machine learning toolbox. Um, the training images and the, voca and the vocabulary size are what are input into the bag of features uh, object and we have to specify the K. For this project um, very, various K's were used um, in sort of a trial and error fashion ranging from 100 to um, 10,000 to see what the best K is across all numbers of categories and it just happened that uh, 3,594 was the was the K that provided the best performance and so that's that's what we used for this project. Um, so then the bag of feature object is returned from that bag of features uh, function and it can be fed along with the training images into the uh, train image category classifier function. Um, and that trains the image classifier and after that we can we can input test images to to evaluate the performance. The plot to the right shows the mean accuracy with plus or minus one standard deviation of error. Um, as you can see the performance declines fairly steeply um, from 85 or this is the mean performance from 85 to um, about 53 uh, percent accurate. Um, and we also see that um, that the even when it's at its most accurate in a mean sense um, for the two category case it still has a fairly high standard deviation of uh, 10 percent. <clears throat> and then as a demo um, I trained an SVM uh, with bag of features um, with three specific categories um, airplanes, helicopter, and motorbikes and just like with the uh, other experiment we use 31 uh, images overall 15 for training and 16 for testing um, an output of of the testing is the confusion matrix which basically says how many times each image was classified um, in as a different image so uh, across the diagonal that it would represent a proper uh, classification and then any off diagonal term would would represent um, an input category that was classified as some other category um, so we can convert that into percentages to create our accuracy and f from that we see that for this specific demo, this this one run, um, it's not a Monte Carlo type case, but from this one run, the uh, that airplanes and helicopters were fairly accurate, but that uh, motorbikes were pretty inaccurate with the test data. So, of the 16 test images used, only 27% of them were were correctly identified as motorbikes. Um, so this uh, took about 170 seconds to train um, and this while it's dependent on the machine and how it's run this this will give it some indication of uh, comparison of performance with the other methods because they were run all one after the other on the same machine so it's just worth noting that it took 170 seconds to train and now we can do a demo by pulling up MATLAB. Uh, so the demo chooses the categories um, and then uh, from it pulls up all of the images from the Caltech 101 set and pulls the specific categories we've chosen. Um, and then here I've just got a few lines to save the data away so that we can work off of one data set without random you know choosing a random sample each time uh, and it also prevents me from having to do the 170 seconds of training on screen here um, so I put each classifier into its own um, uh, function so 
we train a bag of features classifier. We train the uh, SVM with with CNN classifier, and then we do the CNN by itself. And then after that, um, we there's a dialog where we choose which classifier we want to use, and then one image from the test set is selected at random uh, from each category and whichever classifier we used we'll, we'll assign labels to those three randomly selected images and then we will uh, plot the images alongside their labels so for the bag of features classifier we go here and as we've said before we say bag of features and we input the training set and the vocabulary size um, this verbose just means don't output status to the screen um, setting it to false does uh, and then here we train the uh, support vector machine uh, with the training data and then and then we form our confusion matrix and also save away the the support vector machine, machine that we've trained. So now we can run the demo and see what we get. All right, so we're going to select the support vector machine with bag of features. And as expected, Airplanes and helicopter were correctly identified, but it had a problem with the motorbikes. It called it an airplane. So just note that, yeah, it, as we expected, it, it, the motorbikes was only going to be about 27% of the time it was going to come up accurate. So, and there we go. Now we can move on to to the support vector machine using CNN features. So, convolutional neural networks have been shown in the past to have very high accuracy when, when for the image classification task. Um, this was shown in the 2012 ImageNet uh, competition where AlexNet CNN was presented and it outperformed the second place competitor by over 20% and it kind of blew everyone away and it was a, a big milestone. Um, so it's it's a very accurate, useful technique, but one limitation is that it takes a very long time to train. Um, and you also have to have some expertise in in how to train this, uh, the CNN. So one way to get around that is to take something that's already been trained um, and repurpose it for for our specific task. So the SVM with CNN technique is to uh, take the activations from a deep fully connected layer of the pre-trained CNN and use those activations as a feature vector and that feature vector then is used to train the uh, support vector machine. So for this we use the uh, AlexNet uh, as noted earlier with, that was used in the uh, the ImageNet uh, competition. Um, we I took the fully connected layer FC7, which is the fully connected layer, the deepest fully connected layer that, except for the um, the classification fully connected layer. Um, so we use the activations function in MATLAB. This, by the way, it does require the neural network, parallel commute, computing, and statistics and machine learning toolboxes. By the way, just to to run this but it uses the activations function and within MATLAB um, and you input the training images and the feature layer uh, as inputs so it basically pulls the activations of whatever input feature layer that result from the training inputs um, so then once you've got these features in hand you can train them with the support vector machine using the fit uh, C E C O C function and that is the um, let's see it's the fit it, it's the it fits a multi-class um, 
SVM, it trains it. Uh, so I think EC OC stands for um, error correcting output codes, which, as an aside, uh, the SVM is uh, traditionally a binary uh, classifier. The uh, error correcting output code is a is a method of extending that to multi class. So, uh, getting back to what we were talking about, uh, <laughs> um, once we've trained the classifier, then we can use the predict function. Um, uh, of course, we have to extract the images. We have to extract the features first from the from the scene in, and then with those features, those test features, we can we can use the predict function to uh, get a result. Um, and we see the results here on the right. Um, uh, one thing we'll note is uh, that the error the error bars here exceed uh, 100. Uh, that just shows that it's not Gaussian uh, because it's not possible to have more than 100% accuracy. Um, I, I kept the error bars because down here once we get away from this boundary layer of 100% accuracy it does start to exhibit a, a Gaussian behavior. Um, but here you know it, it's clearly can't be Gaussian because if the mean is too close to 100 then all of the errors lie predominantly to one side uh, of the mean. So uh, what we can see is that it's highly accurate with uh, two categories. It's uh, around 99% accurate with two categories and only decreases down to a little above 92% uh, when there's 20 categories. Um, we can also see that there's not a huge difference in the um, in the standard deviation as uh, as the number of categories is increasing. So this degrades pretty uh, nicely and predictably that the in that the standard deviation is somewhat predictable and the uh, degradation is not exactly linear but it's it's pretty close. It's a it's a it's it's a pretty graceful decline in performance. Uh, so for the demo, we trained to the same task as as was done with the uh, bag of features case, where we trained for airplanes, helicopters, and motorbikes. The confusion matrix obtained from from the uh, SVM with CNN features showed 97% accuracy. However, uh, so we should see when we run the demo that it's probably going to get the right answer. There were a few times where it didn't because it's not 100% accurate, but it, it, it's most likely going to be accurate for each case. Um, it's also worth noting that it only took 16 seconds to train. Um, if we recall, the bag of features uh, method took 170 seconds to train. So this takes 10 times less time. Uh, so that's a big plus. Um, and then we can look at the MATLAB code. Um, we've already reviewed what happens in demo, so we can look at this function. So we load the AlexNet, and we have to resize the input images because the first layer of the uh, CNN has a specific dimension, so we have to resize. Um, but that's not a problem. It's easily done. We just change the uh, read function of the, uh, the of of these input images. Um, we select a feature layer, and then we put the um, training images along with the fe the layer that we want to look at, and we we grab its activations. Those will be the training features, and we then uh, put these training features along with labels this is where the supervised learning part comes in um, and and we train our classifier so at this point we have a trained classifier um, and then we can do an evaluation by first extracting uh, features from test images and then uh, using the class, the trained classifier with those test images to uh, determine labels, and then we'll save away the confusion matrix, and then save away the uh, the data that's necessary 
that describes this classifier. <clears throat> so now we can, and, and I guess just to be clear, um, here's where we ran it. Uh, all we did was call that function that we just went over. And, you know, again, we're going to choose the, uh, the SVM CNN and, uh, and it'll grab labels for three randomly chosen images, one from each of the categories, and, uh, and it'll display the results. So we'll run it, and we will choose one for the SVM CNN. And here we are, we get the expected result. It is accurate. We have airplanes, helicopter, and motorbikes. All right. So we can move on to the CNN only uh, classifier. So another way to repurpose the pre-trained CNN is to remove just a few of the layers um, that were specific to the original classification class, and in the AlexNet case, that that original task was to classify 1,000 different images. Um, so we want to train for this for the demo, for example. We want to train only three different uh, classes. So we want to change those um, those last few layers to uh, to allow for that. So um, we just replace we we just replace them. Uh, we and then um, we train this modified CNN and um, we only allow training or learning to occur in those new layers. Uh, we don't want to allow learning to occur in the older layers or the uh, original layers because it's already trained and we don't want to corrupt its accuracy, the, its proven accuracy. Um, so it's worth noting this, this requires training um, so, so it does take time because we have to train the model, but we're only training a few layers as opposed to the full uh, CNN, so it takes considerably less time than training a full CNN from scratch. And we use AlexNet as we did before, um, but instead of using, instead of extracting the features from the uh, fully connected layer, uh, from a fully connected layer, this time we're going to replace the uh, the classification layer, which is the deepest layer, uh, the softmax layer that precedes it, and then the fully connected layer that precedes that, um, which had dimension of 1000 because that's what AlexNet uh, used. And we're going to replace that with a fully connected layer of whatever dimension we need, uh, and then a new softmax layer and classification layer. Uh, so once we've built this, assembled this new uh, CNN, we can use the train network function uh, with training images and and get a train scene in. Uh, then all we have to do is input test images to the CNN with the classify function. Uh, the performance is shown to the right um, as with the uh, support vector machine using the CNN features, there's some non-Gaussian behavior near this boundary layer of uh, 100%. Um, we also see that it doesn't, the performance doesn't degrade quite as gracefully or predictably. Um, it, it's, you know, I, it, trying to draw a, a curve through here would not be quite as smooth. Um, this mean kind of jumps around a little bit. Um, that may just be due to the nonlinearity of the the CNN classifier, whereas the support vector machine is um, is is a linear classifier. Um, it, it may be that more Monte Carlos would be necessary to to determine to to smooth this out, or that may not happen at all. Um, either way, we see that accuracy is still pretty similar, though it's it's nearly 99% for the two category case and it's about 93% when classifying 20 whereas the support vector machine was about 92% accurate when classifying 20 um, so and, and we also noticed this the standard deviation is fairly large for these uh, 
this lower number of categories, but it tightens up a little bit as we get uh, more categories. And for the demonstration, we see we use uh, the same the same uh, classification that we used before with the airplanes, helicopters, and motorcycles. Um, one thing to note is the confusion matrix that we obtained from testing um, had a little more variability in it than the uh, support vector machine did. Uh, the least accurate category was airplanes, and it was 90% accurate. It's still better than than bag of features, but considerably worse than the uh, or significantly worse than the uh, bag of features or I'm sorry with the uh, support vector machine with CNN uh, it's also worth noting that this took about 40 seconds to train so it's a little more than twice as long to train as the um, as the support vector machine uh, with CNN and we can look at the MATLAB code for this now um, it trains the CNN here. So we'll pull the CNN transfer classifier. That's what this is referred to as, by the way, as transfer uh, learning, because we, we, we transfer the pre-trained, uh, the learning from the pre-trained model into a new uh, use. So we load the AlexNet. We have to resize the images just like we did for the uh, previous use because the first layers are unchanged. It still requires a certain dimensionality of the of the images. Um, we extract the original layers um, and uh, add to it a fully connected layer, a softmax layer, and a classification layer. And then we train the network. And um, this is our classifier, our trained classifier, once this network is trained. So then we can test it um, by grabbing labels using the classify function. And these last few are just, they just uh, evaluate a confusion matrix using from the test data and then uh, outputs the, the classifier. So now we can run the demo and see how well it does. We choose CNN. And it accurately identifies each one of these images as airplanes, helicopter, and motorbikes. So, in conclusion, um, the support vector machine using with bag of features is considerably worse than both of the other methods. If we can, if we can use a a, a CNN, it, it definitely seems like that's the approach to use. Um, the The training time is significantly worse than even training the the CNN, and and that's because we have to train, we have to do the k-means clustering. Um, this is where most of the, oh, this is where most of the uh, time. Is 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 taken is doing the k-means clustering is that's an iterative process that has to keep iterating to find the optimal centroids for these clusters, and that just that just takes a long time. Um, now training a CNN also takes a long time, but we had the benefit of using mostly of not of not really training much of a CNN uh, for the SVM with CNN case. We didn't even train a CNN. All we had to do was train the um, the support vector machine and for the CNN only case we didn't train the majority of the network we only trained the last several layers so we we had the benefit of using a pre-trained model there um, both methods of, uh, of the, that used the CNN performed very similarly when it comes to overall accuracy uh, ranging from you know 99% to somewhere around 92 to 93 percent from whether we're classifying two categories or 20 categories. Um, this indicates that the major benefit from the CNN is is in its ability to, to generate very robust uh, features that that can be identified through these classification methods. Um, but what we 
we can also note is that the the support vector machine using the CNN took less than half the time that it took to train the CNN only classifier, um, and that that half as much time becomes very pronounced when we classify uh, many more categories. Um, it, it takes it, it's a very noticeable amount um, when we train twenty different categories. The, the training of the CNN only does take quite a while. Um, but then, you know, as we noted, the uh, the CNN only performed slightly better, 1% better for the 20 category case, and it also didn't degrade quite as um, predictably. So it's fair to spec. it may be fair to speculate that for more categories, um, say, 40 or 50 categories, maybe the CNN only classifier would be better um, because it was less predictable in its degradation. Um, but that is, it would require further study. So that was not examined here. Um, so what we can say is for the 20 categories or less case, um, the support vector machine using CNN features is the best image classifier because it combines the high performance that's that's available from using CNN features um, with the fast training of the of the support vector machine. Uh, so, if if training, if categorizing a, a twenty categories or less, this would this would definitely be the uh, preferred route for uh, for that task. And that. I believe I'm done. That is uh, that is it. Thank you for listening to this presentation.